Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm going to start with a little story. Once upon a time, there was a priest who served in a local parish. People liked her and all. She had the credentials to be the spiritual leader. She'd gone to seminary and, and seemed to know the church rules really well. But her approach was dry, and her sermons focused on the importance of following the rules. People weren't entirely sure where God was in all this, but the priest followed the traditions, and, and she had the authority from the diocese to be the leader, so they went along with it. One Sunday, a visitor came to church. He was a plumber from a nearby town and was passing through with a couple of his buddies. They decided to stop by the church and worship with everyone. At the time of the announcements, the church had a practice to, to welcome visitors at worship and introduce them to the congregation. And the plumber was also welcomed in this way. But when he stood up and was handed the microphone, he instead began preaching the gospel. People were a little scandalized at this because he had no credentials. But the plumber had great passion and confidence. Although he had no seminary training, he spoke with an inner authority, and his message was not like that of the priest. Instead of dry rules, the plumber spoke of God's love. He spoke of an inner working of our hearts towards God, of loving neighbors, of loving self, of proclaiming the kingdom of God. The entire congregation was moved and their souls were fed in a way that they'd never been before. His authority seemed to come from someplace other than an institutional role as priest. There was an older woman in the congregation who had great difficulty walking. Her doctor was recommending a double knee replacement. As she sat in pain, listening to the plumber, he put his words into action, walked over to her, put his hand on her head and called out a loud prayer, asking that she be healed. Suddenly, the woman's pain vanished. She was so startled, she stood up and, and found she could walk with ease. The congregation gasped. It was incredible. The plumber's authority wasn't just from his, his style and content of preaching. It was also from his obvious mystical connection with God. So while the priest had her authority from external sources, the plumber had his authority internally from God. The end. So in case you haven't figured it out, of course, is this little story is a contemporary version of our gospel reading this morning. Jesus entering and speaking in a synagogue as though he is some educated and authorized scribe, and it's, which is scandalous to those present. Yet what he says and does seems to have its own authority. His words and his actions are healing to the people in body, mind, and spirit. Does this mean that Jesus believes that scribes and synagogues have no real purpose? that churches and priests should be overthrown? Not at all. Rather, that authority sometimes just comes from God. If you look closely at the passage, when Jesus confronts the unclean spirit inside the possessed man, the unclean spirit says to him, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit, saying, be silent. Jesus doesn't want the spirit to identify who Jesus is. In fact, if you throughout the Gospel of Mark, Jesus over and over again tells people not to identify him as the Messiah. Bible scholars, the, Bible scholars call this the, the great messianic secret. But why would Jesus hide his identity? Wouldn't he want to proclaim this from the rooftops? 
Because by worldly measures, Jesus has no authority to speak or heal. According to the structures of the day, that's not his role. But today, today's passage makes clear his authority. He does have authority, but it comes from God alone. Could it be that Jesus wants us also to find our authority and calling from God? That we too can heal and serve others as he does? Because if you think about it, one of the challenges of word getting out that Jesus is something special is that people might believe that they can just let go and expect Jesus to take care of everything. We can just sit back and watch Jesus do all the work. But if instead people don't look to a Messiah to take care of them, we might instead look to God ourselves and invite authority and responsibility onto ourselves. Then we too can do the healing alongside Jesus. In other words, what Jesus is doing with the messianic secret is keeping us from simply going to church and instead calling us to be the church. The messianic secret shifts the concept of church from simply the gathering of people in worship, in awe and wonder, to the sending of people out into the world to serve, to build the beloved community everywhere. We too can heal in God's name. Which, of course, brings us to today's annual meeting. I love the annual meeting. And you know why? Because it is a lifting up of us being the church. Emmanuel isn't a place where you call a priest like Matthew or me and then sit back and say, well, the priest has the authority. They've got the collar. I have no authority, so I'll just let them serve the world for me. I'll come to worship now and then and watch the show. Instead, at Emmanuel, you step forward, invite the Holy Spirit to inspire you, and ask, how can I heal and build up the world? The annual meeting is where we showcase this awesome practice of Emmanuel Parish being the church in the name of Christ. For example, Denise Mallon co-chairs mission in the parish as one having authority. Andrea and Dave Sullivan chair stewardship in the parish as those having authority. Neil Adams chairs the finance committee in the parish as one having authority. Lisa Ventura, Faith Hodgkins, Vicki Hutchins, and Cynthia Peach reach out pastorally to those in need as those having authority. Members of the choir sing as those having authority. Henry Jackson, Rose Moran, Tess Nash McIsaac, Gianna Randlett, Amber Rorick, and other service acolytes as those having authority. Michael Jewer, Chrissy Hogue, and Cheryl Nash McIsaac have all stepped up to serve on the vestry as those having authority. The annual meeting lifts up all these people and many more at Emmanuel who recognize their God-given authority to serve in the name of love. You don't need an advanced degree or a clergy collar or someone to formally authorize you to feel a call within your heart and step forward to speak and act in love and healing. Jesus did. And remember, his call to us is to follow him. So at the end of today's service, please continue to stay on Zoom for our annual meeting. Learn about the fabulous ministries being done by your fellow parishioners. Vote for those called to serve on various committees. Listen to the dreams and hopes of the leadership. Marvel at what a year in COVID still accomplished. How the words and actions of you and others are healing to people in body, mind, 
and spirit. As the psalmist writes, Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Amen.